got a panel and I'm Neil from WebPixel. I'd like to welcome you all to WebPixel Live. I'm, I'm really happy to be joined today by my friend Daniel Keller, the owner of Keldon Lights, all the way from Switzerland. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And good. I first met Daniel many years ago at DEMA, and I stopped by his booth for a quick chat about color science, and, and I think it turned into a two-hour conversation. Um, and ever since Daniel's knowledge and his experience of dealing with color underwater, I've always felt a second to none. So I thought he'd be a great guest to have here on WebPixel Live to talk about how color is affected underwater. And although primarily this will be probably aimed at video shooters, um, I think we also have lots of lessons here for, for us more still oriented shooters as well. So um, as is always where with these things, Daniel, I'm gonna start off by asking you a question. Um, and the question is, what happens when underwater video makers attempt to capture colors underwater? Over to you. Yeah, okay. Well, there are different cases which we, I think we have to distinguish what, what case. So let's start with the most simple, which is uh, if you have um, like a GoPro camera or you don't Simple. care much about the, the colors, uh, you, you in your the white balance settings and all this, you bring it down to the water and usually what you get is, is not black and white, but blue and white or green mm -hmm. and white, yeah. <laughs> no colors at all. So this is something well known and this is also teach by everybody who is talking about on the water photography, the red color disappears very quickly and what you actually have on the water is indeed blue or bluish green tint, a very strong tint. It's not white at all. So if you do nothing with your camera, your camera actually shows what, how it actually looks. And this is this well-known picture as you see thousands of times on YouTube. So Daniel, when you talk about color, so obviously in tropical water we have blue, in temperate water we tend to have green water, or green color. Why is one blue and one green? What's the difference? Um, there are algaes in the water and they are absorbing some uh, blue content which makes the water green. Okay. If, if you lose red anyway, so in clear water, in, in tropical water, you have some kind of cyan. It's not really blue, it's, it's green and blue. Right. And um, if you have algae in the water, it depends on the content, on the concentration of algae. Yeah. They, they absorb the blue and what remains is more or less green. This really depends on the amount of algae which you have in the water. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, yes. I interrupted. You were talking about the GoPro and sorry. No problem, no problem. <laughs> um, it's important to know that actually the scene on the water indeed looks like greenish or, or bluish, yeah. but point is, the human eye adapts very well to any kind of lighting condition. And if you, if you are exposed yourself in an environment in, in blue or blue-green, after a few minutes, yeah. uh, your eye adapts and it makes a kind of white balance. It's, it's a human white balance, which wow. works extremely well. Okay. So while you go down, your eye starts to adapt and if you are at the bottom at 20 meter or 15 meter, you don't feel that everything is blue because your, your brain does the white balance. So the camera didn't do it. Yeah. That's the point. You have a camera which didn't do the white balance, but your brain, your eye does the white balance. You know that there have been colors and you are very disappointed if, if your camera shows only uh, blue or green. So in other words, your, your eyes and your brain is adjusting to what it thinks the colors is, are, sorry, and then your camera doesn't. So when you get to the surface, you're not seeing what you thought you saw. <laughs> yes, that's, that's it. So that, that makes, I think, there are thousands of divers who are very disappointed with their pictures. <laughs> and 
The next step you can do is to do the same with your camera as the brain does with your with your perception of, of the colors. Yeah. You you say the camera on the water, look, also it's blue. Now take this as white, do a white balance. So it's well known, you, you, you take a gray cord or a white cord and, and you adjust the white balance. By, by using this neutral cord, you tell the camera, this is supposed to be white. Please adjust your RGB channels to make it white. And so the camera does and the pictures will, will be neutral afterwards. So that's, that's uh, the most important and first step you, you can do to get good colors. So why can you not do that all the time? Why can you not do that at 30 meters? If you if you are too deep, there's really no no red left. Right. So if you have no red, what what can the camera do? Not much. Really not much. Um, after about 20 meter, it's hopeless uh, to try to do a, a good white balance with the ambient light which you had uh, in the water. And um, actually, there are cameras, they do still a white balance, but it's, right. it's kind of cheating. Um, I, I, um, I had the Canon 70D and I did some tests with this. Canon are known for very good uh, color management on the water. Yeah. And um, they actually, they, they do a white balance with about any light but they switch back to kind of black and white or very, very poor colors. They just try to do what they, what you want to do. And uh, if you want to do a white balance, okay, the camera does a white balance, but what comes out is, is of course neutral. The camera did the white balance, but it doesn't mean that you have good colors. Yep. It can yep. be very, very poor if you have no red. Yep. So, that brings us on then. So we're now at a depth where we no longer have sufficient red in order to achieve an, a, 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 a pleasing white balance. What do we do next? Um, the most obvious is bring your light with you. Okay. Um, that's, that's about the only chance to, to have colors back if okay. you are uh, at the 20 meters or, or below. And there is the, the usual way, especially for still photographers, they have their flash, their, yep. their strobes, and they are extremely powerful. You, you can shoot with, with quite short exposure times and, and, and nice uh, aperture, uh, and, and you get, you get uh, um, nice pictures. The light is reaching uh, two, three meters. But you have to know that this light is, is extremely powerful, but just for a fraction of a second. And for videographers, the, this is the main, really uh, main difference for videographers. They, they just don't have this powerful light source uh, as a continuous light. And with, with the strobes, you, you can indeed uh, have, have your own light at depth. And you, you can, you carry all your own light Carry your own light, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but videographers, they have to deal with a, a 10 or 100 times weaker light source, which makes it difficult because they have a mixed light condition. They always have a mix of the ambient light and, and the video light. So this is, I mean, that brings us on to this really. How do we achieve a balance between the colors of the ambient light and the colors of the the um, flashlights, the, the the artificial light. Uh, this is, uh, in fact, um, quite difficult. Or you have to understand how, how it works. I I always recommend uh, kind of 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 two cases and right. not to mix too much. Either you have your white light, your strobes, or yeah. your video light you adjust your color temperature or your white balance of the camera to the same color temp temperature as your strobe or your video lighting. Right. 
then your pictures will be nice as long as you have sufficient light on your subject. So, so yeah. So if you if you have a, your lights are, or your strobe is, is five thousand degrees K, for example, um, you set the white balance in the camera to five thousand degrees K, um, and as long as the scene is lit up by the strobe or the video lights, it looks okay. Yes, uh, that's that's kind of very free setup. You can jump in the water, you know, your settings are right. Yeah. You only have to take care that you are close enough. Yeah. And apparently if you are too far away, everything gets blue. But this looks more or less natural. It's not a disaster yeah. and uh, it's okay. You, you can shoot this way and it's quite simple and uh, especially for everything with, which is macro yep. less than one meter yep. usually this is a very very good approach and uh, if you're closer to than one meter it's it's good anyway it's it's yep. the best approach yeah yeah yep. you said there was a second approach what's the second yes one? yes this is more for wide angle photography if you are a bit further away like three meters and especially if you do video, then you get into trouble. Your light is not strong enough anymore. So it, it, it's weak. It, it lights up only a part of, of your subject and you have a lot of blue light. And this is, this is really a problem because you never know how much blue, what, what blue content you have on your subject. And you never know how to do the white balance because it changes with every every meter. So with the distance, if you are far away, it's it's much more blue. If you are closer, it's much more white. So you do white balance every time, and uh, it's it's just unstable and and not not very nice yeah, yeah, or difficult, yeah, difficult yeah. to handle. What? What I promote is to put blue filters on the light, which have exactly the same color temperature as the ambient light. Right. And then you can do the white balance to this ambient light, which is the same as your blue light on the lighting. And then the white balance is correct for any distance. If you are close, you have distinct lighting on your object yeah. the color temperature is is correct. correct if you are far away the color temperature is still okay but you just don't have as much light on your object that makes I mean, so, so essentially what you're doing now is you're adjusting the artificial light so the lights you're bringing with you to match the, the color of the light of the ambient light yes but this comes with uh manual white plants right okay this is important yeah. you you in that case forget about 5000 or 5600 kelvin or or daylight or okay. so you have to do a manual white plants you have to adjust your camera to the ambient light as the first case which we discussed if you go down with the camera without any light yeah. you you do the white plants to the ambient light as your yeah. brain does yeah, so you're using you're, you're using the white balance, but you're white balancing now to a balanced light rather than two different two different color temperatures. Yeah. Yes, I found it extremely difficult and impractical to have a light source which is weak compared to the ambient light and which is very different in in the color temperature. Yeah. Because this this makes everything really unstable, and and uh, you need to do the white balance for every single shot again, and uh, you're never sure because um, how do you want to do the white balance every time with the gray card? But you need to put the gray card to the object, not not in front of the camera. That that's yeah. another point. So I I don't recommend. And if you've got moving animals, you, you can't yeah. put a gray card. Yeah, yeah that's. That's exactly what happened. If, if you are shooting video and the fish comes towards your camera, first it's blue and then it gets, yeah. if you have a white light, then As it comes into the light. Yeah. It, it the, the fish changes actually the color. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
and that so if you if you use the blue filters then what that on the lights what that basically does if the fish swims towards you presumably all it will happen is that the fish will get brighter it will get more light yes yes that's the point so, so it becomes an exposure issue rather than a white but rather than a color issue yes yes you you only have one problem to deal with yeah. <laughs> yeah. which not, is always a good the, thing <laughs> the, the color problem is solved but now maybe you have an exposure problem yeah yeah well that's we can deal with exposure i think <laughs> yes, this is um, easier. Yeah, at least true. only one problem left. Only, only, yes, that's right. Yeah, we can only deal with one problem at a time. Um, yeah. da Daniel, that's a wonderful explanation. Thank you very much. Um, where? Well, presumably we can find out more about color on your website, can we, Daniel? Yes, we have uh, we have made a, a tutorial video about yeah. uh, filters. Uh, one shows how to use blue filters. Um, this is exactly addressing uh, this this topic which we just discussed. Fantastic. Well, what I'll do is I'll add the link to that into the uh, comments section or into the description of this video so people can reference that as well. Um, yes. So, so thank you very much for, for today. Um, and um, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, which for this episode will be Reef Photo and Video. Um, I um, hope you've all enjoyed this episode. If you have enjoyed it, please drop us a like. Um, if you would like to um, suggest any topics for future um, episodes or alternatives to discuss more about this topic, please feel free to add comments to the comments. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.